Okay, here's another obvious passage that proves that anybody who believes in um, preterism or anything other than pre-trib rapture is incapable of reading the Bible. This is the curse. Okay, remember Genesis 12, God said, anyone who curses you, and he's including the descendants there, I will curse. God will curse. Okay, what's the worst way you can be cursed? Is to not be able to read Bible. Knowing Bible, knowing God is the greatest happiness there ever can be in this world or the next. Not knowing how to read Bible, therefore, means not knowing God and is the worst cursing that can happen to you. I, I, the more I, I find out about this, the more I think that, you know what, if, if I don't learn and live on Bible, I would rather be just obliterated if that were possible, which it isn't. Hell sounds better to me than not knowing Bible. Okay? Look at this text in blue. This is why God punished Harold Camping and all the people in whatever that stupid movement of his was. They can't even read Revelation 9. They think they were the ones. They think that this passage authorizes if, is our, our evangelists. They think that they're the locusts. Well, hello, let's take a look at what that says. You, you, you see it in blue now, because I'm going to take away the highlight. Okay? Star from heaven that fell. What is Satan's name in, Gen in Isaiah 14, 12, before he fell? Chelel ben Shachar, star of the morning. Satan is the star from heaven that fell. We kind of all know that except Gail Ripplinger. The key of the bottomless pit was given to him. He opens it and smoke comes up. Now look. If those guys who followed camping thought that they were the people in this passage, then they're saying that they come from the bottomless pit and Satan frees them. Whoops. Smoke comes up. They're also saying that they're in the bottomless pit, not on earth. Okay, and this is Abusas, actually. Okay, it's translated bottomless pit. Smoke coming up out of the pit. So they're saying that, oh, we're the locusts, we're the blessed ones, and we're coming up from under the earth where God has kept us trapped for X number of years, and Satan frees us. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that means Harold Camping is Satan. I hope you understand that. They can't even read that plain text. All right? They can't read it. I mean, what else do you call this? Then out of the smoke come locusts. Okay, locusts are known as destroyers. They destroy crops. They don't grow crops. They destroy crops. Power is given them like scorpions of the earth. In other words, the power to harm, hurt. Harold Camping's people actually look at this passage and think it references them as saviors of the earth. Is that what that word, those words are telling you? Not exactly. See, this is the incompetence. Harold Camping was anti-Semitic. And everybody listening to him is anti-Semitic. Okay, there are a lot of people who are upset with him because they did believe in him and his prophecies, which are completely convoluted, did not come true. Okay, and so now they're bad mouthing him. But honey, before his, before God shut him up, made him mute, and proved his prophecies false, which he did seven times at least, how can you read that text there and not understand that it's saying the opposite of what he was saying? Something's mentally wrong with somebody who looks at that passage and doesn't recognize that it's talking about demons. Hello. See, Satan is releasing who? He's not releasing humans. He's going where? To a bottomless pit where somebody is trapped and smoke comes up and the sun and air are darkened. These, this is literal. 
then out come locusts. Now that is a figurative word. Because power is given them, this is telling you that they're, they're actually beings, as scorpions of the earth have power, meaning to sting and harm. They were told, so they're not exactly, see, you're told when something's figurative and when it's literal. They were told not to hurt. Well, that means that they have brains, okay? They have souls. They can comprehend and get communication. Not to hurt grass or any green thing, but only what? The men who don't have the seal. Only unbelievers. See, Satan releases what? It's got to be his fellow beings. Satan isn't going to release somebody who's inimical to his plan. And they're not human, obviously, but they do have souls. So that leaves only one choice, that they're angels, fallen angels that have been imprisoned in Abusas for a very long time. Abusas, again, is translated bottomless pit here. So this is about demons coming to earth being allowed to torment for five months. Very literal. Okay? And then it goes on about their glorious appearance. In other words, they're all shiny and, you know, impressive. Like horses with armor plate. And their heads appear like crowns. In other words, very shiny and glamorous. They got faces like men, so obviously they're not literal locusts. Okay, they had hair like hair women, meaning long hair, and teeth like lions. In other words, that they could really bite you. Okay. In other words, they're good looking, they're flashy, they're big. Okay. And, you know, the hair like women, is that supposed to be beauty? You have to interpret the Bible at the time it was written, crowns like gold, that means flashy. And they look like men. So demons look like people, but they're flashy, they're big, and they've got certain beauty to them, and they've got a certain fierceness to them. Okay? They had breastplates, like iron. In other words, they, they're, wearing, they're wearing something. And the sound of their wings. Okay, now, wings doesn't have to be literal. It could be literal, but they don't need the wings to fly. Okay, it could be just a, some kind of ornament that they choose to wear or they have. Sound of chariots, in other words, very noisy. Very many horses rushing to battle. Okay, because we know angels are made of light, so they could be choosing to have this appearance. Tails like scorpions, so they're, they're maybe decide to craft their bodies that are, in, you know, bodies of light into, you know, looking like scorpions too. The point is, is these are not physical insects they're very obviously demons belonging to Satan they have king over them angel of the abyss abyss again is bottomless pit Hebrew means Abaddon means destroyer Greek is Apollyon this is where word Apollo comes from and it also means destroyer Apollumi is the is the um, verb Abaddon means destroyer in Hebrew okay now whether this means Satan or some other king that was underneath them I submit it's a, the king underneath them that there was a sub king under Satan called Abaddon but you, you can read it both ways I'm, I'm not 100% sure I can prove this idea that it's somebody else but it might be I haven't worked it all out yet you know so you can interpret that two different ways maybe all right but the point is, is this is happening at the beginning of year three of the tribulation. And hello, it has not happened yet. There has never been any recorded event, especially after 70 AD. So the preterists are completely off base in saying that John wrote in 70 AD. This has never happened yet. Demon armies rising up from the smoke of a pit that that only do something for five months in the third year of the tribulation. The third year. Okay. There's no church. 
Okay, very obviously there's no church. Satan is not on earth, thrown down to earth. He didn't fall from heaven yet because he's still up there accusing us. Now, the so-called church fathers and the Calvinists all try to explain this stuff away, but their arguments are just as stupid as Harold Camping's. The, your typical preterist is going to try to say, well, see, this is actually, um, these are actually humans. Okay, hello, look at this. The number of the armies of the horsemen was 200 million. I'm sorry, there were not 200 million people taking over the temple in 70 AD. You couldn't fit 200 million people in Israel. I'm sorry, there's just not enough room. Dan the Beersheba is only 180 miles. You can't fit 200 million people in there. All right, so you know, even dispensationalists have screwed this up. There aren't 200 million people assembling in the valley of Israelin during Armageddon. You know, there have been those stupid, oh, golly, I can't believe how stupid scholars can be. There was a whole lot of discussion about, well, you know, China can have a 200 million standing army, so this isn't talking about people, these are demons. Demons' bodies are made up of light. They don't take up any space. They're visible or not if they want to be, and this area that they're in is not restricted to Israel. It's all over the world. Well, 200 million can fit all over the world. You see, the, if you want to go against pre-trib rapture, your brain doesn't work like Harold Camping's. And even if you do go with pre-trib rapture, if you start to try to claim the Bible is saying something it's not saying, then you prove yourself an idiot. The angel fell from heaven. Who would that be? It can only be Satan. Bottomless pit. No humans are there. These beings come from a bottomless pit. And there's 200 freaking million of them. They're not human, okay? And they're not assembling in the valley of Israelin at 200 million. You couldn't fit there to fight. You wouldn't even be able to fight. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you could. Maybe you could fit 200 million standing up. Everybody standing up like sardines. But you sure wouldn't be able to fight. You see how stupid people are when they want to reject the Bible specifically here the Bible doctrine that hello this is the tribulation this is the time of the Jews and specifically this is the third year of the tribulation okay so we end this increment on this thing that's very obvious focusing especially on the fact hello these can't be humans and it can't have happened yet. We'll come to the next increment when we have Revelation 11, which is even more hysterical.